Shakespeare is the bard, the bard. If you ask anyone who has not a single clue about English literature or about drama or hasn't read a single book in their life, which is pretty rare, they'll still be able to associate Shakespeare with English literature. And I agree, Shakespeare had an impeccable understanding of humans, of life, of the world around him, but it wasn't all genius. Shakespeare, like most others during his time, used a specific formula to make things go right. There are certain themes that are around at any given point of time, like the novels of manners during the Victorian era and the epics during the ancient Greek era. These days, and I mean it in the grand history of things, say from around the 2000s, the most famous tropes are the romanticized bad boy, I'm, mut- I'm putting it in quotes by the way, the, and of course the I have feelings for two brothers and I don't know which one to pick trope. What's up with that? Vampire Diaries, the originals, the summer I turn pretty, everyone's done it. Love triangles in general are the thing these days, I think. And I'm not saying that they're bad. Tropes are just a part of a formula. But the point of it is, these tropes garner attention. There's a way of fads, of trends that comes along. And if you've mastered the art of surfing, you can get on that wave and ride it. Mastering the art of surfing involves recognizing the structure and the themes that would get the attention of the audience and then adding your own flair to, to it to create the perfect formula. The biggest misconception about Shakespeare is that he's a literary icon. Well, he's an icon now, but he wasn't writing his plays for a Nobel Prize in literature. He was writing them as a script for the stage so that the actors could bring his words to life in front of an audience. It would be like giving the Booker Prize to a screenwriter now, although the demarcations weren't as rigid back then. But yes, just like they used tropes in TV to make the perfect TV show that the audience will love, Shakespeare also used a formula to make the perfect plays that were loved by the people of the Elizabethan and Jacobian eras. So let's move on to how he got this formula. Number one, the rules of drama. If Freytag's three-act story structure is the one people recommend now to write novels, Aristotle's rules about drama were the ones that were followed during the Elizabethan era. Except Shakespeare didn't follow all of them. He was more the know the rules so you can break them kind of guy. Shakespeare's tragedies. Romeo and Juliet, Hamlet, Othello, Macbeth, Titus Andronicus, Julius Caesar, to name a few, were all, as Aristotle intended them to be, imitations or mimesis of an action that is serious, complete and of a certain magnitude, through pity and fear affecting the proper purgation or catharsis of these emotions. Aristotle also presented three unities that were followed in the writing of drama, which Shakespeare violated more often than not. The first one, unity of action. A tragedy should have one principal action. Unity of time, which says that the action in a tragedy should occur over a period of no more than 24 hours. Unity of place, which says that a tragedy should exist in a single physical location. In none of the tragedies or comedies that Shakespeare wrote did he follow these unities. He included several subplots occurring over multiple days or weeks and often had his characters travel within or outside the country that the play was set in. Moving on to number two, borrowing stories. The thing about Elizabethan era England was that the playwrights, poets and writers all existed in the same spaces and not just the same literary spaces but also the same geographical spaces. They frequently ran into each other and frequently talked about what they were working on. And through this, there was a lot of, well, well, we can't really, we don't really call it plagiarism, but that's essentially what it was. Romeo and Juliet was borrowed from Marlowe's ideas, Hamlet inspired by Thomas Kidd's The Spanish Tragedy, Othello from Tales of Geraldi Cynthia. Shakespeare wasn't burdened with creating an original story, just an emotionally charged one. The art of imitating or drawing from the scholars who came before you was pretty respected then. It was sort of like paying homage to them. But then again, that was just because they hadn't invented plagiarism yet. 
moving on to the third one the acts and what goes into them so basically every drama especially tragedies had a certain number of acts as designated by aristotle to encompass the protasis epitasis and the catastrophe and what goes into these acts was also pre-given the rising action conflict falling action climax and the resolution were in a vague sense the constituent of these five acts but if the tragedies of shakespeare followed only a single plot all of them would end in three acts at the most because the audience wasn't kept from the tragedy creating mystery wasn't the goal of the shakespearean drama in fact to illustrate in othello iago frequently and at length tells the audience what he's scheming and how the play is going to play out so like how did the action become so charged with thrill the climax so poignant how did the viewers stay in their seats for five acts simple answer delaying the inevitable apart from the main plot there were several subplots and interjections included in shakespeare's plays these subplots added content and weight to the story and supported the main plot by examining and explaining the reasons behind every character's actions and these interjections well they came in the form of long back and forths between characters that provided comic relief repertoires between side characters soliloquies and long winded monologues and the play in a play featured in hamlet and other such things they made the plot three dimensional and obviously kept the audience hooked there's of course many more things that make up a shakespeare play the types of characters the dialogue the setting the stage of the times and there are differences between tragedies and comedies but that's a topic to be explored from some other day hope you enjoyed created by mrunal rajadeksha